Mitchell, the president of Tree Leaven, which is a retreat and learning center that's located on a sheep farm here in Addison County. And we are thrilled to be partnering with Growing Bright Futures and Let's Grow Kids, doing this series of shows about what's going on in our community for families with kids, both young kids and all ages of kids. And really very, this, this is a highlight for me today because uh, Dana Anderson, who's the coordinator of Building Bright Futures, is going to be on the show today talking about the upcoming stress, de-stressing for the holidays. And Megan James, who works at the Town Hall Theater as the community outreach specialist, is also here. So thank you both for joining us. Thank you. Nice. We're so happy, <laughs> what can I say? So Megan, let's start with you. Maybe you could talk about what you do at Town Hall Theater. Sure. Um, so uh, I am um, community outreach coordinator, which basically means I am there to um, meet up with other people throughout uh, both Middlebury and beyond Middlebury um, and connect with them about ways that we can collaborate at Town Hall Theater. Ultimately, the ultimate goal, I believe, is to try and get different kinds of people into the theater that normally would set foot into Town Hall Theater. Um, so we have a great group of people who come to Town Hall Theater, um, but they're often a lot of the same people. Um, and so we want to get um, more parents with young children, more low-income people, more people who may not have access to transportation, more people who just, for whatever reason, have not set foot the, into the theater or who don't think of the theater as some place where they are welcome. Um, so my role is, um, is very sort of open-ended. It's just to, um, to find those people and find ways that we can get them mm -hmm. into the theater. So what, what ways have you found? So, <laughs> um, so a couple of things I've done. I've only been there for, well, I guess I've been there for about a year now, um, uh -huh. working part-time. So I'm st sort of still finding my way in, um, into it. Um, but one of the things we did um, last spring is we did a screening of a film called um, Unslut, which was a documentary. Um, and it was part of this thing called the Unslut Project um, that was shown in a lot of high schools um, around uh, the country. Yep. It was about um, it was about the concept of slut shaming, um, which I don't know how many people are familiar with that term. But the idea that for you know for girls as young as middle school, there's sort of a there is a double standard for you know um, for their uh, for how they present themselves and what they wear and and how they talk to boys and then you know what kinds of relationship they have with boys um, and how very easy it is for um, for girls to be shamed for their behavior. Um, and so it was a bit of a, a like um, activist kind of documentary. Uh -huh. um, and we had the filmmaker. <laughs> it seems like a really daring choice. Yeah, it was, um, yeah, and it was cool. We brought in um, folks from the school, from the high school, um, from the parent child center. And obviously we opened it up to everybody yeah. and we had a discussion afterwards. Um, it, it downstairs in our studio, where people talked about um, about slut shaming, and um, and it was a it was a cool event, and it got people talking, and that was the first one I did, so it was um, you know there's definitely uh, more I'd like to do, but um, yeah, it was a, it was that was one thing that we did, um, and then uh, another project um, when the uh, I don't know if you've heard of there's a sculpture a new sculpture park in Shoreham out on Route. 74. I read about the that. Lemon the Fair yeah. Sculpture Park. Um, so my other role is I, I write for Seven Days um, and Kids Vermont. And I had met the sculpture folk, the sculpture park people when I was uh, writing a piece about it for Seven Days. And I thought, wow, this would be a really cool sort of collaboration with Town Hall Theater. You know, I bet people who would be interested in art and sculpture mm -hmm. would also be interested in theater. Um, and so we held a big um, uh, sort of um, walk through tour this summer of the um, of the grounds and the um, and the Ittlemans who own the sculpture park and who live there <coughs> led a tour um, so people could see the sculptures um, and it was a benefit for Town Hall Theater so we kind of got to wow. you know, to yeah. merge yep. some different kinds of people in that way um, and then I could say more but I don't want to give away what we're going to talk about oh later. okay <laughs> <laughs> Unless, but um, maybe I can ask you a couple of other mm -hmm. things do you so as an, um, a person of a certain age, 
um, I often go to those Wednesday morning screenings oh, about yeah. the Great Art Wednesdays. The Great Art Wednesdays. Yeah. Is there something like that for families with young kids? Um, there might be, and we've talked about one of the things I'd love to do. So I also have a two-year-old, and I'm also expecting another baby in April. So um, I'm I am that <laughs> demographic. Yeah. So I'm the kind of person who, while I work about this stuff, and I think it's and I you know I love theater and I love. Um, all the things that Town Hall Theater does, I don't actually get to go to a lot because, you know, <laughs> I have to put my daughter to bed at 7.30 or 8, and mm -hmm. then it's like, well, i got to be at a babysitter, and there's so many reasons why you wouldn't go out to see a show. Yeah. Um, so one of the things I would love to get off the ground, um, which we're working on, is doing sort of a mid-morning um, music event at the theater that would be open to... Um, parents with young children who, um, you know, caregivers who are not, um, uh, who have, I don't know, they've done the library, you've done the open gym, yeah. all the wonderful things that we have in this community, but it would be nice to have one more option um, and have, uh, be able to come in and, um, you know, hear some music, um, make some music, uh, and then have a little playtime after that. And uh, so that's one of the things I'd really like to get going. Yeah. Um, and it would be like 11 a.m., you know, or 10.30. <laughs> <laughs> so you could be done before nap time. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can you tell us a little bit more about what it's like to live in this community with a two-year-old and somebody else on the way? Sure, what yeah. What supports you? What do you wish were here? Um, besides what you're going to do at Town Hall Theater? Sure. I am uh, very, very thankful that I live in this community um, at this stage of my life. I went to Middlebury College, so I lived here as a college student. And then I lived in Burlington, well, we lived in Winooski when my daughter was first born. And we decided to move back here um, when she was about eight months old because, um, well, for lots of reasons. But um, one of the reasons was I just loved the feeling of being in this small town and of having, being able to go out, you know, aimlessly and walk around town and know that you're going to see four people you know who can, uh, you know, make you feel less isolated. I think yeah. it's a very, isol it can be a very isolating thing to have a young child um, and to be the caregiver. Um, I work part-time, so I'm with my daughter three days a week. Um, and, uh, you know, being alone with a two-year-old is like, <laughs> it's like, you know, it's, <laughs> it's great, but it's also <laughs> Fun it can and be challenging, really like right. mind-melting. So, um, so I really love um, that I don't have to make any plans and I can go into town and I can like always count on there being some sort of a play group. I'm so thankful for the Parent Child Center's play group um, and the uh, library, which is amazing. And, um, you know, the, we go to a play group at the um, Helen Porter Rehab, um, which is also amazing wow, because we yeah. get to be around older folks who are, you know, also really happy to see kids in their midst and um, so I'm, I'm really thankful for that and I realize that you know I've got it pretty good here um, and uh, I'm probably have a little more privilege than some people but I feel very thankful I feel like it's a good place to be um, to be raising a kid so it actually sounded like you don't work part-time it sounded like you work part-time at a number of different jobs I do Yes. <laughs> yeah, I have two, like two work day. I mean, two work days a week, and then there's other things that I sneak in around that. You know, like today is not a work day, but I'm here anyway. Oh, well, thank you. Oh, <laughs> I mean, I didn't mean it like that, but you no, know, no, no, you I, know how it is yeah, when I, you're I working. You're sort of weaving to stuff together. together. Yeah. So yeah. that's how it goes. So can you tell us how you came to this job at Town Hall Theater? It, it sounds like you're a journalist. Yeah, so I am. Yeah, so I worked for, um, right out of college, I started at the Addison Independent as a reporter for um, a year and a half, two years, um, and that was the best first job ever. I learned so much, and it was uh, also made me feel very, very rooted and at home in this community, <laughs> um, and probably the reason why I wanted to come back. It's like, this is home. Um, and then I went to New York for a little bit, and then I came, my husband and I came back here, um, and I worked for, I started working for seven days about five or six years ago, six years ago. Um, and then also Kids Vermont, which is seven days is parenting publication. Right. When I was pregnant with Joni, actually, that's when I was like, hey, I could start writing about kids stuff <laughs> and also learn something. That would be great. Um, so I left seven days and Kids Vermont as a full-time writer um, at some point after, I don't know, when Joni was a baby at some point. I can't remember when it was. 
maybe a year ago. Um, and, um, and we moved here. And I was just looking, I wanted to feel rooted in this town. Um, and I've always loved theater, and I've always loved town hall theater. I think what they do is just great. Um, and we have so many amazing um, local theater companies and, and musicians, and there's just a lot going on there, and it feels like a very vibrant center of our town. Yeah. Um, so I think I saw a posting on Front Porch Forum for this job, <laughs> and I was like, ooh, that sounds like it would be a great marriage of the things that I uh -huh. like. And also the community outreach, in a way, feels similar to journalism in that it is just talking to people, meeting people, you know, coming up with ideas yeah. with people, collaborating, um, you know, everything but the writing part, which is kind of a relief. So <laughs> it's good. <laughs> I'm thinking about um, like the event the Town Hall Theater did with Mud mm. during the during the summer that was really very family friendly. Fooderoo. Fooderoo. Yes. Yeah. Were you part of creating I was not part of creating it at all. Uh -huh. um, that got off the ground before I started with Town Hall Theater and that uh -huh. had, I mean that was it, this was its first year, I mean, sorry, this was its second year this past summer. I think after that first summer, it was like an immediate classic, that event. It was a really good, popular one, yeah. so it didn't take much. So I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's great. I think that kind of thing um, is such a great opportunity for, um, for this town to bring together people, you know, um, uh, around food and music and, um, and live performances. Yeah. I, I think it's really good. So I'm also wondering, um, maybe we should ask Dana, or both of you can talk about, there's an upcoming series, sort of a parenting series about de-stressing for the holidays. Yes. And the first one is going to take place at Town Hall Theater. Do you want to tell us more about that, Dana? Sure. So this parenting series is called Healthy Children, Happy Families, and it is a um, really a collaboration between Otter Creek Child Center, Bristol Family Center, Evergreen Preschool, and Addison Building Bright Futures, and funded in part through uh, the Vermont Community Foundation Small and Inspiring Grant. And so the structure for this parenting series is to be held one night a month, and it will be in Middlebury at the Town Hall Theater for the first one on December 13th. And each month it will move to a location in uh, Virgins for February or January, and then on to Bristol. So it will rotate throughout Addison County. And the topics will be um, anything that's related to parenting um, for parents of young children. And um, so the first topic is going to be about de-stressing for the holidays. And it will be on December 13th at the Town Hall Theater. Um, dinner and free child care will be provided for kids um, downstairs at the theater. And then upstairs will be about an hour and a half program, which will be led by Phoebe Chesna. Um, we'll do some... Stra uh, yoga and some kind of um, opening and then uh, Dr. Jody Brakely will be there and she's going to do uh, a quick overview on how stress affects the brain and how stress can affect children in the family and then the last part of the program will be focused on um, strategies for reducing stress and we'll have a whole bunch of community resources and partners that will be available that offer different types of wellness activities throughout the county. So people will have a chance to learn a little bit about um, brain science, um, just enough to understand it, but not too much <laughs> to fall asleep. And then also um, leave with some solutions, and we really hope that parents can have some time to network and have communications among each other, um, because like Megan was saying, when you're a parent, um, sometimes it's really just great to have a structured environment with free childcare to kind of connect with parents, which you may not do otherwise when you're working and busy in your lives. And then you'll do the same thing every month? Yes. And Town we have Hall Theater, then is it the Opera House in Virgins? In Virgins, I think it will be at St. Peter's Parish. St. Peter's and then in Bristol, uh, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Hall, uh, Holly. Holly Hall, maybe? Yes, I think yeah. so. And so those subjects were in development to see whether this um, de stress for the holidays will be the same topic in those locations or if we'll switch to another topic. Some of the other ideas floating around are about food and healthy cooking and picky eaters and challenges um, with feeding kids and uh, sleep routines, things like that, things that every parent faces. Right. Mm -hmm. 
That sounds great. Sure. We're yeah. really excited about yeah. it. Uh -huh. yeah. And so this is part of, you had mentioned earlier that there's sort of a schedule of things coming up at Town Hall Theater. Yeah. And something is taking place at Thanksgiving or before yes, Thanksgiving. Yes, well, I thought since I'm on TV, I might as well plug some of the okay. cool things that are happening <laughs> okay. at Town Hall Theater coming up that families might be interested in. Um, this is, uh, we're really, really excited about this event. And I think it's just going to be such a cool um, way to get um, parents and kids out at, during that magic window. It's 5.30 to 7, so um, it's, you know, catching them after work, but before the bedtime hassle, and there will be food, and there will be, you know, I, very, I think it's going to be really cool, and people can connect. So um, the other things that are coming up at Town Hall Theater are um, right after Thanksgiving, we have the, this is a, a fun event that sold out last year, and we're hoping it sells out again, and it is the Internet Cat F Festival. The Internet Cat Video no. Festival. I'm oh, so I sorry. I heard about this. <laughs> Which sounds very silly, <laughs> and it is very, very silly. Just think of your favorite cat videos, <laughs> and then put them all together on a big screen. The best part <laughs> is that this is a benefit for um, Homeward Bound, um, the humane society, the local right, humane society. Great partnership. So, um, so that's a really fun thing that's just goofy, and it's the Saturday after Thanksgiving, so it's kind of that lull when yeah, nobody yeah. is, you know, you're all sort of, what are you going to do? So, so Megan, so. why <laughs> is it that those cat videos are so why? Because cats Touching to are <laughs> appealing, whatever it is. <laughs> I mean, I think that would, I think you could write a dissertation on such a thing. I don't know. I don't know. Why are cats so special? They're very special. And they are delightful to watch in video form. So, um, well, you'll have to find out. You'll have to come on Saturday and find out. Um, and then, uh, and then begins, of course, that big holiday uh, push. Um, so then we've got a couple of cool things. Um, on December 3rd, actually, um, we are, the Town Hall Theater Education Program um, is presenting A Christmas Carol. Um, and that is going to get people ever, already in the mood. Um, and I've been told that this... And is that a kid's production? Or yes, and I've been told uh -huh. that this one includes physical comedy, which I, I don't know exactly how that fits <laughs> into it, but there will be some physical comedy. Okay. <laughs> um, so that's December 3rd. Then on December 9th to 11th, we have um, a really cool production called It's a Wonderful Life, um, a live radio play. So it's going to be based on the classic movie that we yeah. all love, um, but it's going to be presented as if it's a 1940s um, radio broadcast um, by a um, uh, professional local uh, troupe. So um, that's really exciting. Um, and then the last one I was going to mention is just uh, the Middlebury Does Christmas event, which is um, December 16th and 17th, and that's going to be jazzy renditions of classical Christmas songs, including a, um, beatbox, a beatboxing little drummer boy. So um, <laughs> that'll be really cool. That sounds great. Yeah. So how do people find out? I, I know the information about Town Hall Theater will publish at the end of this um, interview, but how do people stay on top of what's going on there? Um, well, the best way I'd say is to sign up for our email newsletter um, because uh, you get a, I think it's weekly news blast of all the things that are coming up, and that's cool just to keep in the loop of what's going on. Right. Um, you can always visit the website too, um, or just every time you drive by on the big marquee, it says what's coming up, so that's always a good way. Uh -huh. But. Um, and are you also, I know you're doing a lot of partnerships, and Miniberry seems to be the place that people go to find out about what's going on for kids, so will it also show up on Miniberry? Do you uh, the yeah. registration link for the De-Stress for the Holidays workshop on December 13th will be housed on the Miniberry website, and it's a free event, but people need to RSVP so we have enough food and spaces for childcare. And, and what's the deadline for RSVPing? Do we have that yet? December 6th. Okay. So, yeah, so December register 6th. by December 6th mm -hmm. on the Miniberry website. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, so you also mentioned an, a new cool project that's coming up about stories. Can you tell us more yeah, about that? Yeah, sure. So um, this summer, um, Town Hall Theater began um, the very beginning phases of a kind of ambitious playwriting project. We're hoping to write a play about Middlebury, which is a very big thing, <laughs> um, because how do you know what to write about. So um, we, uh, a, a group of us from the theater, have um, spent the summer and some of the fall talking to people um, in the community um, about their lives and about their stories and about things that happened in Middlebury that were memorable, um, you know, moments throughout 
their lives and their parents' lives and their grandparents' lives um, that brought the community together or divided the community. Um, it's been a really cool uh, sort of uh, exploration of uh, the people who live here. Yeah. Um, and the hope is that we will take these interviews and um, and then hire a playwright to um, turn the interviews into a play that has yeah. music. The, okay. I mean, it's in the very ambitious scope of this, we'd like to have original music as well and performer, local performers and actors performing this piece um, as a way to sort of present a Middlebury story back to the Middlebury community. Um, it's been a cool thing for me in my role because it's a, another way to connect to even more people yeah. um, in this community in kind of an open-ended way. Is it, is it part of the storytelling group that meets here at the library? Is it's it not to actually, that? It's like although we did, we have talked to some of the people in the group. Um, and, uh, but no, it's a totally separate thing. Um, Haley Rice, who does our, who's our operations manager at the, at the theater, um, came from a theater in Georgia before this um, that used to do this every year. And every year, I think every year, Wow, seems like a big original project. play. Maybe it wasn't every year, <laughs> but it was. A, they'd done it a couple times, um, and they uh, and she said it was just a really powerful model um, to be able to tell a community's stories back to them. And it wasn't literal. It's not sort of. It's not a journalistic project. It's yeah. not like a, you know, a documentary. Um, it's really the when it. I think when it works well, the playwright is inspired by these stories, but creates a narrative that um, you know that that may take some poetic license with the stories, but gets uh -huh. the essence of something that, uh -huh. that was shared in those interviews. So so um, I think it could be really cool if we can pull it off. Yeah. <laughs> and is there also a moth type component to it? Um, not, not right yet. now, okay. no, no. Um, but that is one way you could go, one could go. But I mean, it's, I mean, it's all over the place. We've thought about, oh, you know, we should have a a scene that's just excerpts from Front Porch Forum. I mean, if you've read Front Porch <laughs> Forum, like, you know. Which I do, most of us do it just religiously. Yes. It's like the first you know thing that, that you go to <laughs> when you turn your computer on. <laughs> right, and there's these wonderful, quirky, just tidbits of people's lives, you know, um, like lost goat, you know, and then somebody else, like, I found a goat in my, in my garden. <laughs> um, there's just really wonderful stuff in there, so. Um, who knows? Maybe we will reach around there too, for stories. Yeah. I'm, my mind is obviously churning. My daughter was just on Prairie Home Companion, oh, no and I'm thinking, oh, maybe they're going to do that in Middlebury. They're going to do some kind of weekly uh, or monthly show. That you would know, be great. It, yeah, I guess we'll see how this. We have to begins. hire a big team oh, yeah, to, to, right. get <laughs> to get that done. Okay. <laughs> but one can dream. Well, we're, we're about to run out of time, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'm wondering if either of you have things that I forgot to ask about that you'd like to talk about? I don't think so. Upcoming think events or your dreams for Well, I will say that we're hoping that the event that Dana and I are working on together, um, we really hope that it is a, um, it, it's traveling to a few different towns, but we hope that it's so successful in Middlebury that we do it again in Middlebury and we make it a regular thing for our local community yeah. as well. Um, we, uh, we, we just, I think it can be a really great opportunity for um, strengthening the connections between families. You know, you're often so tied up in your own routine that you don't actually get to sit down with other families and share ideas or struggles or, you know, I, I don't know, any sort of meaningful um, conversations that aren't interrupted by your two-year-old. So. Right. <laughs> So that's the hope, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how about for you, Dana? Are there other? We should mention that you're now not just Addison County, but you're both Addison and Rutland County starting today. Is well, this starting true? in January. Starting so in January. Yes. Okay. So it is my hope to continue working in Addison County to help promote wellness kind of healthy activities and opportunities for all families to engage in and um, really focusing on the early years and making sure that there's high quality um, opportunities for young kids and families and just um, really like Megan is saying that um, creating a culture of wellness here in Addison County and throughout Vermont that it's just um, <coughs> aside from having healthy families your neighbor's family is also healthy and connected and everyone kind of supports each other but in a really positive strength-based way. I, I love the concept that health is not just you know getting your vaccines which is important but mm -hmm. 
um, that it really does have to do with being involved in the arts and parents yeah. having a chance to talk to each mm -hmm. other. There's, mm -hmm. It's a broad, broader concept that somehow is unfolding here. Yeah, and to just make it normal and that it's everybody struggles with um, kids going to bed on time and picky eaters and <laughs> being stressed around the holidays. <laughs> yeah. So um, we hope that it will be catchy and we're really trying to listen to what parents want. Uh, so as we plan future events, hopefully at the Town Hall Theater, it will be based on what parents want to come and see and, and talk about. Great. Well, thank you both for being thank here today. Thanks for having us. Thank yeah. You. And um, the contact information for Megan and actually for Dana as well will show up in just a minute. I just wanted to thank Kurt Broderson, who's the producer here at Middlebury Community Television, for doing the show for us. And to encourage anybody who has information that they want to get out to the public to give the station a call. They are just, they're incredibly wonderful to work with. So thanks for watching us. Hope you'll come back next time.